Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Undercover Comics, coming to you from Seoul, South Korea. This is comic haul number three, and I hope you enjoy. I have indie, DC, and Marvel back issues to show you, so let's get started. We always start with indie, and my first indie book is... Black Magic number one from Image Comics. This story is written by Greg Rucka with art by Nicholas Scott. Now, the art and story are fantastic. The art is incredibly detailed and intricate. I love the black and white, and the story is incredibly well paced. In fact, the first 10 pages of the story read somewhat like a prologue, meaning that it's written in a way that drags you in and makes you want to continue turning the page. And I think it very much so accomplished that goal. It starts at the scene of a hostage negotiation, which means there's not a lot of dialogue, but there's a great deal of suspense. I really like this issue. And if you're looking for something new and you like the Supernatural Occult, go ahead and give it a shot. I loved it, and I'm going to continue reading. This comic was a dollar. I got this back home at my comic shop, Lee's Comics, back in Mountain View, California. Shout out to Lee's Comics. And um, if you get a chance to pick this book up, go ahead and do it. The next book up. Excellence number three from Image Comics. This issue and series are fantastic. I read this via Comixology when it goes on sale, but it is definitely worth the cover price. This story is about power, legacy, race relations, and invisible forces of control. These characters are given powers, but to keep their powers, they have to use them a certain way. Basically, they have to use their powers in service of people that are deserving. Uh, if they misuse their powers, then their powers are taken away from them. Now, this particular issue focuses on loyalty, addiction, family, and interracial marriage. As I said before, I think this issue is fantastic, and I think this series is doing a wonderful job of exploring issues of race and gender and class, and it's doing it in a very nuanced and very refreshing way. So go ahead and give it a shot if you can. Again, I got this comic for $1, and I'm very happy about that. The next book up. The Goon, number three from Albatross Funny Books. This story is written and drawn by Eric Powell. This man is on both services, and he is fantastic. This man is a master of his craft. His writing is fantastic. It's funny. It's well-paced. His artwork is phenomenal. I mean, this guy's on the next level. I wish his work was a little bit faster, but considering the amount of responsibility he's thrown on himself and how good the quality of the book is, I think I can give him a hall pass. I picked this up because it was a dollar, but I already have these on Comixology, and uh, this series is phenomenal. Give it a shot. The next book up. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 44. This is the Cover B variant. The next book up. Thumbs number one from Image Comics. Uh, this story is about the poor and disenfranchised youth of the world, the government's reach and responsibilities, and the use and regulation of technology. It follows a boy named Charlie Thumbs, who's an underprivileged youth and gamer turned child soldier in a war against the government. Um, a man named Adrian Camus believes that technology, and specifically access to technology, is a freedom. Uh, but the government obviously does not believe this, and they have plans of their own. I like this story, and I think the flashbacks were well utilized. They were basically a very well-placed exposition, and at the end of the book, the stakes and the goals were very clear. I like this issue, I like this series, and if you can find this book in your local shop, go ahead and pick it up. If not, read it via Comixology. It is worth a read, and it's very interesting. The next book up. Needs no introduction. This is The Walking Dead, number 192, written by Kirkman from Image Comics. This is the penultimate issue where... Carl kills zombie Rick and leads us into 193. The next book up. TMNT number 99 from IDW Comics. This story is written by Eastman. This is City at War Part 7. I love this series. I love this issue. And I'm going to continue reading. I think the art is fantastic. I think the story is well paced. I think the quality of the book is phenomenal. The only thing I don't like about this book is the price point. The price point of this book, the cover price of this book is $8. So if you are like me and you read these books every issue and you buy these books every issue, then it may help for you to pre-order this book to get it at a discount. I think this book, uh, if you pre-order it, it comes down to like $3.99 instead of being 
you know, $7.99, which is still expensive for a pre-order, but it puts you in the ballpark range of a regular comic issue, like from Marvel or DC, and that keeps my pocket happy. Uh, and if I have to cut out extra books to buy the actual paperback copy, if I'm buying it late, then I'll do that. Um, but anyways, that is the end of my indie run. Which means our next comics up are DC Comics. And my first DC comic is... Swamp Thing Dollar Comics. This is awesome. This is the closest I'm ever going to get to a Swamp Thing number one. And I really enjoy it. The next book up. Titans number 26. Uh, nothing special about this issue except the cover is a variant cover. Um, but it was a dollar, so I picked it up. The next book up. Sandman Universe presents Hellblazer number one. This is on DC Black Label, and it is a fantastic book. And here is the cover B. Again, I thought the pacing and the dialogue were great. I love how JC is just so aware of his audience and he plays right off of us. It's, it's awesome. I really like it. The next book up. Death, The Time of Your Life, issue number one. This is written by Neil Gaiman. And uh, this is the second story arc. And again, if you know me at all, you know how I feel about death. Um, this story, this particular issue, follows a famous musician who is uncertain about the next step in her life, her career, her relationship, and her ability to come out as a lesbian. I love death. This story is great, and I'll leave it there. And that is the end of my DC run. So now we move into Marvel, and the first book up... is Journey into Mystery Number 1, The Birth of Krakoa by Dennis Hopeless. Um, now, this title is pretty self-explanatory. I got this book for a dollar. Um, but as a result of human activity, the island mutates and becomes active. Nick Fury and some operatives crash land on Krakoa, and the island seeks to get revenge. Uh, this book was basically a horror comic. Um, this was some of the freakiest, weirdest stuff that I have seen in a comic other than Little Bird for a very long time. The island is attacking them, but in various ways that I don't want to describe because it just weirds me out. It makes my skin crawl. And uh, that's about it. Fun, but very weird, very grotesque. The next book up. The Uncanny X-Men number 254. Two fifty five and three sixteen. Now these comic books are so much fun. Issue number three sixteen is the first appearance of Monet Saint Croix. Uh, I really like these issues. It starts uh, with an interesting prologue, and I think Banshee has excellent detective skills that are vastly underrated. Batman, man, he's giving Batman a run for his money. Uh, because Banshee is Banshee's on point in this in this comic. I thought it was great, and all of these were a dollar. The next book up, Uncanny X Men number two eighty two. Well, number one, True Believers number one. Uh, these stories are so much fun. I just think the style is fantastic. It's just so so retro, so nineties, man. It's just like right up my alley. This is like what I was. This is what drew me into comics when I was a kid, like the giant massive muscles and the color schemes and the, the blue, the yellow, the red together. And uh, these ridiculous hairstyles, man, I just, I love it, man. This is exactly what comics are for me. And it's just, it's simple, it's well-paced, it's solid story development, so, solid character development. And man, I, I'm happy that these comics exist. I get to get this comic for a dollar. I get to have it in my possession because otherwise I would never have this comic. The next issue up. Multiple Man, number five. Now, this comic was just weird. Uh, it wasn't that good. 
And uh, I'll leave it at that. The next issue up. This is The Eternals, Volume 3, Number 1. This is written by Gaiman with art by John Romita Jr. Uh, this is issue number one of six. Now, in this story, there's a guy named Mark Curry. Um, he's a doctor, but, you know, he's got a ton of student debt. His girl just left him, and, you know, basically his life sucks. Um, but his life is going to change. His life changes when he's visited by a man named Icarus. And Icarus informs him that he lost his memory and that he's actually a 500,000-year-old internal with superpowers. Uh, it's a fun origin story, but the story didn't hook me until the end. The last couple of pages saved it for me. Uh, the artwork is okay. It's not as Kirby-esque as I'd like it to be. Uh, the cover is beautiful, uh, but the interior art just doesn't really seem to match that. And, um, you know, not a disappointment, but um, I'm glad this issue was a dollar. The next issue up. Arrow number one, this is the regular cover A. The next issue up. Fantastic Four number one, The Prodigal Son. Uh, I thought this issue was okay. I think the cover is a little misleading. Uh, there is a new character introduced in this issue. But again, I think the cover is a bit misleading. And I thought the story and the art were just okay. Nothing special. The next book up. Jane Foster Valkyrie number one from Marvel Comics. This story is written by Jason Aaron and Al Ewing. I like this story. I thought it was well paced. I think Jason Aaron and Al Ewing are very good writers. Is it relevant right now? No. Is it necessary right now? Not necessarily, but I did like it. It was okay. I'll leave it there and uh, move on. The next issue up is Incredible Hulk. I'm really happy to have this comic. I really like reading it. I like the style of the art. I like the style of the storytelling. I think it's fun. And uh, I think comics are kind of missing the fun a little bit these days. You know, is he a man or a monster or is he both? It's kind of like quirky and a little campy. But at the same time, this story is a very dark story. When you really get down to the nuts and bolts of it, it's very dark. Um, but I really enjoyed it. You get to see how comic art and direction have kind of altered over the over the years. And I think this is a very good example of that. My final Marvel book is Venom number 19. This is the Absolute Carnage tie-in. Now, personally, I know I'm going to get some heat for this. I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. Uh, I liked Absolute Carnage, but I think Venom is better. Not to say that I regret reading it, because I don't, but I do feel like this uh, Venom series is the stronger series, and I'm glad this is continuing. I, I honestly think this is the better storyline, and I'm glad that they're back to it. I'm glad that the Absolute Carnage, Carnage series is over, and we can get back, to the, get back to the basics here, because I really enjoy this, and I want to keep going with this. And I, I'm glad he gets to put all of his attention back into this box. I wanted to take the time to thank all of my subscribers and all the people that are watching this video right now. I haven't done that yet and I should be doing that a lot more often. I'm close to 50 subscribers. I know that's not a lot to a lot of people, but that is a great deal to me and it means everything in the world to me. Uh, my friends and family do not know about this channel. They don't watch this channel because this channel was intended for real comic fans. And I want everyone who's watching this video to enjoy it because they enjoy comics and this, this thing that we do here, collecting. And the people that watch this channel are watching this channel because they have a love for comics and a love for collecting the same way that I do. And I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching this video. Regardless of how much time you spend on this channel, regardless of how much time you spent watching this particular video, I really appreciate you stopping by and uh, taking the time to share this passion with me. Um, with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. This is Undercover Comics, and until next time, peace.